Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this problem. We're going to find the work required to pump the water out of the spout, where basically this is a tank that is full of water, and we're going to have to figure out how to pump the water out of this spout up here. So I did recently do a, another work problem where I showed you how to find the work required to pump water out of the spout of a different type of tank. It was a spherical tank in that one. If you want to check that out, just click up there in the upper right hand corner of your screen. That'll take you straight over there to check that out. Uh, in that one, I went into a bit more detail about the process. I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. But the reason why I wanted to show you this problem specifically is because this one is in uh, imperial units where the other one was in the standard like metric system units so uh, it is slightly different when you're doing feet or you know feet and pounds versus meters and uh, kilograms so I want to show you what that difference is like before we jump into it real quick the reason I'm showing you this problem is this is one of the formulas on my calculus 2 study guide that came out recently there's a link down in the description if you want to check that out it's available for instant download it's very affordable just a couple bucks you can go get that right away download it print it out keep it handy on your computer whatever you want so you can use that to study for tests easier and quicker do homework easier uh, should be a huge help to you so go check that out link is down below but let's jump into this problem so as with any of these work problems, work problems, what you want to do first is basically figure out, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is first figure out if we imagine kind of breaking this tank down into having a bunch of layers. So in this case, basically our tank, we have, uh, it's like, you know, this triangular prism basically where this top here is flat. So basically our top layer of water is just the very tip, tip top of this tank basically. And then as we go down, you can see that each layer, if you imagine each layer of water would be just like a rectangular prism going across is going to get shorter and shorter. But each layer is going to have to be pumped up further up the tank. So what we want to do first is figure out basically an equation which represents the volume of the ith layer of water. So to do that, what we're going to need to consider is uh, similar triangles, basically. So what you want to think about is how the width of each of these layers is going to get smaller as we go down into the tank. So first of all, what you want to do is kind of add in or create your own variable, basically, which represents the distance that we have to pump the ith layer of water out. So basically what that is, so you can imagine this ith layer like right here, for example, would have to be pumped up from here up to the spout. So this vertical distance right there. So basically the variable that we want to create is going to go from the top of our tank where the spout is down to whatever layer of water we're on. And basically what we want to do is we want to call this distance. Uh, there's not really a good place to write it here. We'll put it over here. We want to call this X I star. And basically what that represents is uh, it's the distance from the layer of water that we're looking at, the ith layer, up to the spout, which basically means the distance that we have to pump this layer of water. So what we need to do is use that distance, right? Because the, the, the width of each of these um, layers changes as we go deeper down into our tank. So basically the distance that we have to, what we want to do is create an equation which represents the volume of our ith layer of water dependent on the depth at which that layer sits, which is going to be basically an equation which is dependent on xi star. So how we can figure this out is basically we can, let's just think about what this tank looks like just from the side. So we'll just take like a side view of the tank basically. It's just going to be a triangle, a right triangle, which is 12 feet on top, 6 feet here, and then this 10 feet is not going to come into effect when we just look at the side. What we need to do is we want to imagine these are our layers are going to be going across sideways and our xi star now measures from this point here down to whatever layer we're on there so that's our xi star and what we want to do here is notice we have these kind of similar triangles right so we have this small triangle right here which is similar to this big triangle which is 12 feet by 6 feet so what we want to do is think about what this small triangle is well, this small triangle, we can see, let's kind of draw just this small triangle down here. This distance here is going to be 
you know, this whole side minus whatever xi star is, right? So six minus xi star should give us this side. And then this side right here, we're gonna need to figure out using similar triangles. So similar triangles basically says if we have, we'll just call this Y for, for now. If we set up a ratio of our small side of our small triangle over the small side of our big triangle, so six minus XI star over six, that should be equal to the ratio of the small side of our small triangle over or I'm sorry, the big side of our small triangle over the big side of our big triangle. So by similar triangles, we know that this is gonna be true. So now what we wanna do is solve for Y, right? Because Y represents this length right here, which represents this length right here, which we need to figure out the volume of this layer of water. And remember, I said we do want this equation to be in terms of XI star. So if we take this equation and solve it for Y, that'll give us an equation in terms of xi star, which tells us this distance, which we can use to find the volume of that layer. So to solve this for y, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 12, which will cancel that. Our six will cancel with the 12, making it a two. So we're just gonna get y equals two times six minus xi star. And then we can distribute that. Giving us that. So basically this will be an equation which re represents the, the width of this layer of water. So remember for volume of a layer, we, we basically wanna think of these layers as really, really thin rectangular prisms. So the volume of a rectangular prism is just length times width times height, right? So in this case specifically, we just figured out, we could call this the length. The length of our ith layer is just gonna be 12 minus two xi star. So basically in our volume of our ith layer equation, we can replace length with 12 minus two xi star. Okay, so then what we need to figure out is the width of this rectangle. Well, the width is just gonna be this distance across here, which is gonna be 10 feet no matter where we are, right? This, this side length of our layer of water is always gonna be 10 no matter how far down into the tank we go. So that's gonna be 10. And then what we need to do is figure out the height of each of these little layers, basically the thickness of each of these infinitely thin little layers. Well, basically in terms of these work problems, Whenever you are looking in the direction that your xi star or whatever variable you've created is going, you know, traveling throughout your tank, the, the distance between each layer, which in this case matches up exactly with the height of our rectangular prism, would always be considered delta x. So delta x essentially just means the distance that we go from one xi star to the next. If we you know put in the next layer of water that's how far our delta x is so basically the thickness of each layer of water so this should give us an equation for the volume of the ith layer of our water or our tank so now this is where it gets a little bit different the fact that we're using feet versus meters so if we were using meters we would now need to figure out the mass of each layer of water the mass of our ith layer of water However, since we're working with feet and pounds, since we're working in the imperial system, what that means is basically weight, the weight of water accounts for the mass of water and the force that gravity is putting on it. So we actually don't have to figure out the mass of the ith layer. We can skip straight to the force acting on the ith layer. And the reason why is because we know we know that water has a weight of 62.5 pounds per cubic foot. Well, the weight of 62.5 pounds per cubic foot takes into account the mass of water as well as the gravity that, it's, uh, that is you know, acting on it. So basically by multiplying the volume of our ith layer of water times 62.5, that is gonna give us the force acting on that layer.
So with the Imperial system, we kind of skip past the mass and go straight to the force because that 62.5 number already accounts for both of those things. So now what we want to do, now that we've figured out the force acting on the ith layer, is figure out the work required to lift the ith layer up. Well, this is where the formula on my Calc 2 study guide comes into play, because on that study guide it says work is force times distance. Well, we already have the equation for the, the force acting on our ith layer. All we need to do now is multiply that by the distance that we have to lift that layer, and that'll tell us the work that it requires to lift that ith layer up. So if we take our force and just multiply it by the distance that we have to lift it, which remember, we said xi star represented exactly the distance that we have to lift the ith layer up. So if we just multiply this whole equation by xi star, that should give us the work required to lift the ith layer up. So if we just do 62.5, we can simplify this all at the same time too. 62.5 times 10 would be 625. And then we can multiply that by xi star so giving us 625 xi star times 12 minus 2 xi star times delta x. So now this equation tells us the work required to lift the ith layer up out of the spout. So now what we can do is set up our integral and basically sum up the work that it required is required for each layer. And that sum of all that work required gives us the work required to pump all the water out of this uh, tank through the spout. So to do that, all we have to really do is convert this into an integral. So we're going to take the integral of 625. And now, you know, we had this kind of xi star variable and delta x. When we convert from this equation of, you know, taking the work required to lift the ith layer, we can kind of just change that into the standard form that we, we see with integrals. So instead of xi star, we can now just say x, 12 minus 2x. And then instead of delta x, delta x is actually going to change to dx. In terms of an integral, dx and delta x are essentially the same thing, but dx makes sense in terms of an actual integral, which we now have to figure out. So now what we have to do is figure out the bounds of our integral. Well, the bounds of our integral are essentially just going to represent the all the different x values that we could have. Or basically, you know, considering the fact that x represents the distance that we have to pump each layer of water out, we're just going to put the range of all different x values that we would have to, to look at in order to look at every single layer of water in this tank. So you can see the spout basically comes out right equivalent with the top layer of our water. So when x is 0, we're looking at the top layer of water. So basically that tells us the smallest x value we're going to have is 0. So the lower bound of our integral will be 0. And then as we go down into this tank, we can see that we're going to go as far down as a depth of 6 feet. So if x is 6, that tells us we're at our last layer. So we're going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 6 in order to go through all the layers of water. So that tells us the bounds of our integral will be 0 and 6. So now we can go ahead and integrate this. So what I would recommend doing to integrate this, this integral specifically is to first distribute. So 625x times 12, it's gonna be 7,500x. And then 625x times negative 2x, it's gonna be negative 1250x squared. So keep in mind, all we've done up to this point is simplify, we haven't actually integrated yet. So now to integrate, we can do this just using the power rule. So we're going to raise our power by 1, divide by the new power. 7,500 divided by 2, we're going to get, so we're going to get x squared, and then 7,500 divided by 2, which is 3,750. And then we're going to raise our power here by 1, giving us x cubed. And then we're going to do 1,250 divided by 3 which is not divisible by three. So I'll just leave it as an improper fraction there. And then we're gonna evaluate this from zero to six. We can see if we plug in zero into this equation, we're just gonna get zero. So basically evaluating from zero to six would be the same as plugging six into this. And doing that is gonna give us 45,000. And then the units on this is gonna be feet pounds. So hopefully you found this video helpful. 
But if you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty more videos that should be a huge help to you as you work through calculus problems. So together, I'm sure we'll be able to get some pretty good grades for you. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.